Hi, Greg Haynes here. Welcome along to Talking Away. I hope you enjoy the show. And for more information, visit the social media channels, Greg Haynes TV. week on we're talking away with the 2023 british superbike champion tommy bridewell Sunday the 22nd of October 2023 and this time last week Tommy Bridewell was waking up hoping that he would become the 2023 Bennett's British Superbike Champion. That he did, beating his PBM teammate Glenn Irwin by the narrowest of margins, half a point. Tommy, congratulations. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us. There couldn't be a more popular champion, in my opinion. And part one is a two-part question, if I may. So the first part of it is, when you woke up this time last week, how are you feeling? Yeah, morning, Greg. Thanks for having me. Um, (laughs) No problem. uh, uh, Mixed emotions, really, because... um, just kind of reversing the clock, uh, reversing the clock back um, by let's say half of a day. Um, I was lining up for the Saturday sprint race, um, which strangely I knew was a very fundamental race of that weekend. Um, I went into obviously brands seven and a half points behind, uh, and I had a plan. I had a plan before I rolled out on Friday that I needed and wanted to be able to go into the Sunday races with a 10.5-point lead. Um, it doesn't matter how many points you win the championship by, whether it's half a point or 100 points. Um, it's like everything. You know, you win a race by half a second or, or 10 seconds. It's the same points. It's the same, you know, um, glory, should we say. So uh, the hard work for me was done on the Saturday race, but but waking up, on Sunday, um, exactly like you said, was was very mixed emotions. Not not because I've got the opportunity to become British Superbike champion. Um, it was because everything I've done up in my life it was was for that moment. Um, for that that day, uh, I was either going to be going home very happy or very disappointed, um, and. You know, there's other other years I've I've kind of gone into the last round. It's been me against Taz, and you know I've always been there thereabouts, but almost been the the one on the back foot. Where this year I was the one on the front foot. I had it to lose, um, and and my competitors had it to gain. Let's say so. Mixed emotions uh, is is probably an understatement. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to forget actually that you went into brands behind in the points. So just to complete that question with part two, how did you feel when you woke up this morning, one week on? Yeah, I I felt I felt good um because I knew my plan. I think that was fundamental for me. The plan was was fundamental where instead of me waking up thinking, what if this and what if that and shall I do this and shall I do that? It, I woke up going right. Um, if I ride how I have done all year, um, all I need to do is finish second, it, and that's it. You know, um, the 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 stress of it was obviously Cole was in the mix, but I felt waking up quite calm, weirdly quite calm, quite relaxed, not stressed, um, and just ready to ride my bike like it was any other any other weekend, which. Doing doing this podcast with you now makes it sound easy, but it it was very minor things annoyed me, and I tried to not have that. You know, very very minimal minor things, and I know it sounds quite petty, but because of the because of what was at stake for me, um, and I almost sound bad saying it or feel bad saying it. My my lunch, uh, because of race one to race two, we don't have much time, so it's so crucial for me to refuel 
my energy as fast as I can, ready for race two, the final race. Um, and my lunch was like 10 minutes late and I was stressing. Um, and it was little things like that that annoyed me because I wanted the whole day to go like clockwork, you know, not one thing out of place. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 I guess it's easy for me to sit here and say I was calm and relaxed, but little things did did almost stress me out. I just had this horrible feeling watching it, thinking if these two take each other out, you and Glenn Irwin, that is, Kyle Ride, if he'd won that race, that last race, he would have won the championship, wouldn't he, with the point system as it is now, with the modern-day showdown. What was the feeling for you, Tom, going into the last lap when you were sat third? You had to pass Kyle Ride because if Glenn won that race with you third, he was the champion. So were you nervous in the sense that you thought, crikey, I might have lost this? Or did you know, I'm all right now, Glenn can win. As long as I pass Kyle, I'm all right. Exactly that. Um, I the, the only thing in that race that, that I didn't preempt and I didn't... Um, let's say, have a have a, a plan for was Glenn come out of turn one. So the race was clean. Glenn sat at the front. Uh, I sat in second or I sat in third, wherever it may have been, second at the time. And then Glenn come out of turn one. He looked behind because he knew, obviously, he needed to put a bike between us. He looked behind um, yes. and had a big moment. Yeah. And I thought to myself, oh, um, that's a different uh, different aspect to it. I didn't quite uh, see that see that move come in. Um, it, but it was, you know, I, I, I reacted fine. I went to go up around the outside and he, and he picked up the bike. He, he was looking on his left. He, he tried to run me, um, wide, which obviously then subsequently hampered both of us because then Cole come past both of us. Um, but going on to that last lap, I, like I say, I felt like I've been riding so good all year and I felt like I've been calm and relaxed, um, in in adjusted to every in any situation and that was no different i went into the last lap glenn got to the front carl second i was third i was right behind carl i didn't know where i was going to pass him but i knew i was going to pass him because i've been so strong on the brakes um and it's no secret obviously that's obvious you know my the the ducati is as a faster bike in a straight line than the yamaha um so i got the run out of turn one I had a slight, weirdly, I had a slight moment on the rear as I dropped down, which actually potentially helped me because as it slid very marginally, it almost turned the bike a bit more aggressively to fire me up the inside of Carl. Um, it's funny, really, because he said to me after, he said, I, he said, I knew you were coming by, but he said, I didn't know where and when. And then I heard, <laughs> this, he said, I heard this screaming and squeal off your rear tyre. Um, oh, and he wow. said, that's where I knew you were coming past. So, yeah, we, we ran a tiny bit wide, but luckily it, was, it wasn't it was enough for him to be able to come come back under me. Um, and I knew what I needed to do, defend on the last lap. If Glenn, you know, tried to pull any sort of other, let's say, tricks, um, I, I was riding very reserved the whole weekend, in, in all honesty. I was riding so reserved that, Part of me looks back and thinks maybe I should have just got to the front and perhaps checked out. Um, I felt comfortable enough to be able to do that. But, yeah, you just never know. It's it's easy to say it, but sat at the front, you're the one in the firing, you know, firing line when you've got it all to lose. So it's more, I felt it was safer for me to be sat behind Glenn instead of getting caught up with any sort of silly business. Well, Tommy, there's three people I want to talk about primarily in this podcast, apart from yourself, of course. One of them is your brother, Ollie, who you tragically lost in an accident at Mallory Park in 2007. And of course, you've been racing for him. You've dedicated the title to him. And we'll come to him in a few minutes time. This podcast is called Doing It For Ollie a week on Tommy Bridewell. So we'll come to Ollie in a moment. Paul Bird, of course, your late team boss, who we tragically lost about halfway through this season. But the third person is your teammate, Glenn Irwin. And let's just go back. Let's go back a little bit now to the penultimate round at Donington Park because there really were some massive fireworks there. Glenn started getting quite erratic and a bit out of shape. I didn't really get sucked in. I was just breaking where I was breaking and didn't realise they were breaking a bit earlier than me. And unfortunately, 
There was three, two didn't come out. So I apologise to Glenn. Look at Tommy Brydman! Oh! 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 You believe no! it! No! Why did you that? Tommy Brydman takes out Glenn Irwin! Unbelievable scenes. And if they'd made up before, they haven't now. I must say, I think he's bang out of order, you know, come running over in, kicking in, in the gravel, because, you know, I could have been seriously injured, so that, that is absolutely bang out of order. But, yeah, I apologise to him, I apologise to the team. It was Tommy's incident, but he couldn't get down the inside, he was sort of blocked. He didn't actually intend on no, wiping Absolutely out. not, you never do, you never do. Glenn, quite clearly, very upset about it. When you're this fast, you're this close, and the passions are running this high. Well, the voices of my Eurosport colleagues there, Steve Day and James Whittam in commentary. Tommy, there's so many questions I want to ask you here. First of all, how the relationship with Glenn changed over the season. And then as soon as that pressure lifted when you both crossed the line, it, like that love you have for each other came back. We'll come to that in a minute. First of all, listening back there to Donington, to the commentary and to yourself, how do you feel about that whole episode now? My heart rate, my heart rate's rising. Um, <laughs> it... The, the 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 fact, to be honest, uh, Greg, I obviously had to start from dead last. Um, there's no way in a million. I've said it before. There's no way in a million years. I'm no superhero. I shouldn't have been able to have come from last up to first. Um, it's it, within half race distance. I expected to get back towards the front, but I had 20 laps to do it, not 10. Um, <laughs> when I and when I come in down into that the Melbourne Loop, um. Facts, the facts of the matter are, I was actually going two kilometers an hour, which doesn't sound much, but I was going two kilometers an hour slower than I had been all race. Um, so it's not even like I went in faster. Unfortunately, uh, Carl went past and, and I thought, that's fine. You know, Carl's riding great. He's got good pace, um, no, no stress. Um, and then Glenn was kind of getting all erratic um, and elbows and legs sort of kind of going everywhere. And, um, and to be honest, for, for me, uh, I just kind of got sucked in. And, and it was a split decision of either T-boning Carl, um, which, would have, which would have hurt him, you know, in, 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 and I never would have wanted to have obviously done that. Or there was a very small gap. I felt if, if luck was on my side, I could have got through the gap. I'd have ran wide um, and, and just recovered. But uh, I just caught the back wheel of Glenn. Um, and, and that was it, you know. So... Strange, very strange race. Never ever do you want to take your teammate out, but unfortunately, you've got two very fiery characters fighting for one goal. Um, and sometimes that happens, really. I mean, what makes it particularly strange is that, like you say, he's the worst person you could run into in some ways, but also the best person in some ways. Not that you would ever, ever, ever mean to do that. But in terms of championship points, if you're going to go out, the best person to take down is your teammate, I guess, in that scenario. Um, Listening back to you there saying, you know, it was bang out of order. Glenn ran over to you in the gravel. He then went online and posted quite a long video message, didn't he, after that round saying, I want to stress, I did not touch Tommy. Um, it felt like the relationship was terrible at the time. So just how bad was it at the time and how different is it now? As soon as you crossed that line at Brands and then the respect you showed for one another after that race, I thought was absolutely fantastic from both of you. Really emotional. And the respect you have is clear to see, but I guess it must get very, very tense when you're fighting for a championship. Yeah, exactly, Greg. And, and to be honest, yeah, Glenn was 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 naughty um, approaching me uh, in the gravel because um, no matter what scenario, no matter whether I hit him off, he hit me off. Um, we as racers, if if lost, you know, other fellow racers close to us in. And we know anything can happen. Um, so he was silly, very silly doing that. And he knows that. Um, I was the one in the wrong because I hit him off. But needless to say, it, it, there was no excuse for that. So um, I think I did see a comment about how he thought I was, I, something about how he, I was like a, a footballer rolling around and there was nothing wrong with me. With me. But it is what it is. Um, and then like, exactly like you say, um, uh, after brands, you know, I think it's like everything. Um, there's there's a lot of antics, shall we say, behind the scenes that that the public, you know, the TVs don't see. That's been quite exhausting this year. Um, so the emotions for me to be able to 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 kind of completely blank that out that a lot of um, other riders haven't been able to. Uh, I've been able to blank it out and actually come out on top. 
is being been mega for me really good um and i have a, a massive amount of respect for glenn as as a rider he's he's a strong rider um he approaches his racing very different to me which is probably what i find strange the strangest i'm not saying we're all the same but uh cole ride or, or ryan vickers or whoever um I, I probably prefer the way they approach their racing because if they can beat me, they can beat me by outriding me um, and vice versa. But uh, yeah, Glenn probably approaches his racing in quite a different different way, to be honest, than than, a, than any other person I've ever ever known. Um, but yeah, n- needless to say, I still respect him as a as a rider, um, and I think he done a I think he's still done a you know a good job for for the team this year, obviously. To, to get a, a one two in the championship for for what they've been through was brilliant. And I appreciate I can't go into absolute detail there, Tom, but people will be wondering when you say other antics going on behind the scenes, are you referring to Glenn specifically or something else within the team or something totally different? I think the dynamic of the of of, of all of it it, it slightly changed we strangely after Alton Park. I think Glenn sort of um comments of of how obviously he's had this super upbringing um no, there's no it's, it's it's fairly fairly obvious that he's kind of you know it upset my mum it, it upset my mum massively where she's kind of it's obviously you read between the lines he's, he's trying to say that I obviously didn't have a very good upbringing in in not with no common sense um it, that was silly of him um and since that point I lost a, a lot of respect for him because uh, I wouldn't wouldn't have gone on on camera and said that. Um, so behind the scenes, like I say, it's um, it's probably not as as hunky dory, shall we say, as it perhaps looks on camera. But we're both very professional. That we know we're there to do a job, um, and 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 that's what we do. We're employed by the team to do a job. Um, so yeah, the main thing is is we kind of do that to to our best abilities, really. And obviously, Glenn's not here to defend himself or give his the version of events on this podcast. I mean, this is all about you and your championship. But is it fair to say yeah. at least that the relationship is now much better than it was at that time at Donington? Uh, uh, no, absolutely. And to be honest, like I say, I never really like to go over the past um, because it doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, the amount of social media abuse that I got from from stuff was was weird i've never ever had it before so it was quite eye-opening but um no i've got no no issues with with glenn at all um i think i'd probably be i'd be more truthful by saying that you know he's he's another rider on the grid um i he probably will say differently but i i'm not going to go out for a drink with him tonight let's say um we we we're just fellow racers is, is such uh i respect him for what he is able to do in you know and that's that's all i need to do um so yeah it, it's uh like i say he, he is a good he's a good lad he's a good lad um and if we were all the same it would be boring i suppose yeah it feels like if it's fair to say he's more of a professional respect at the moment than a personal one maybe in terms of the team Absolutely. yeah in terms of the team you obviously lost paul bird and it's been a horrible few months, hasn't it, for the whole of the Bird family? And Jordan's done a splendid job, hasn't she, in picking up uh, the gauntlet, as it were. What kind of a man was Paul Bird, and how important is it to you, Tom, that you have finished first and second? The last thing Paul would have known is that his riders were first and second in British Superbikes so after a couple of very difficult years, and you've gone on to finish first and second in possibly the most memorable finale ever, certainly the second most, if it wasn't the number one, half a point. How important is that for you and for Paul Burr's memory? Yeah, exactly that. Um, Paul, Paul is a, a great, a re- this is being a hundred percent truthful. Now, Paul is probably had a very colorful past, shall we say, um, what a great guy, you know, I, I have gotten so wow with him. Um, the, the sort of, friendship we built in such a short time was was brilliant um so sad because i felt you know we we could have gone on to some amazing things together um it was just brilliant brilliant time i had with paul and, and i enjoyed every every moment of it because instead of him looking like he was kind of going to give you a 
uh, a bit of a, an ear to into or to your ear off kind of a bit of a telling off. It, it, he he would put his arm around me and say, "Look, you know, don't worry, you know, we'll we'll bounce back and we'll get it get it right, you know, so on." So he was very encouraging, very uh, very good like that with me, and and uh, very sad, very sad the that the the time that he obviously found out that he had passed away because um, yeah, it just. Still quite hard to sort of digest, to be honest, for, for myself. But the main thing for, for for everyone involved was I was able to win him his his last British Superbike Championship. Um, and, uh, you know, I was able to, to, to fly the flag with pride for, for him, really. Absolutely. Really well said here, here. Well, in many ways, Tom, there's a first eight and a last eight here. And the first one is Mallory Park 2007. The last one is Brands Hatch 2013. A lot happened in between, of course, many podiums, your first win at Caldwell Park in 2014. Let's have a listen to this then. Very sad memories, but also some incredible memories at the same time. Once again, we're going to hear from James Whittam and Steve Day, as well as yourself, and also the commentator, Fred Clark. I dedicate everything I do in my life for my brother. And it is with great personal sadness I inform you that during Friday's first Superbike free practice session here at Murray Park, there was a serious incident involving 21-year-old Ollie Bridewell. As a result of injuries sustained in that accident, Ollie passed away. Ollie Bridewell was a heady mix of lovable traits that combined to make him hugely, hugely popular amongst his peers and his friends. He was, without doubt, a seriously talented and committed superbike racer, whose performances improved with each and every outing. And yet, oft times, Ollie could play the clown prince with escapades that really became the stuff of legends. But to me, and to many, many more, I suspect Ollie Bridewell was a breath of fresh air in this all too frequently serious world. Very, very rarely, without that engaging smile on his face, simply to have been in Ollie Bridewell's company was a treasured memento. The day I lost Ollie, I promised him, I promised him, I will become British champion. This is this day. My life is complete, 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 complete. All Calorad can do is get in the sleep stream and try and squeeze his mouth. Oh, there's a moment there for Clint Owen and around the outside for Tommy Bridewell. Carl Wright's got the inside line. Tommy Bridewell has to sit up and Carl Wright now leads. Unbelievable. We said we were waiting for a, a mistake and that was a slight mistake there. And now Tommy has got to do something He's got to make a pass. This. He has to make a pass for the championship. He has oh, to do. Oh, and he's squirming away, losing grip is Glen Owen. We start the final lap of the year. The crowd don't know which way to look. Tommy knows, though, if he can go through, then his job done. He does go through. Can he get it stopped? Car ride on the cutback. No, he doesn't. Tommy Bridewell's doing enough. Uh, <laughs> As it stands now, it's the eighth change of the championship lead. And right now, Tommy will win it. Yeah, and this is going to be difficult for Kyle to get anywhere near Tommy now at the end of that straight. The checkered flag is being prepared. The last race, the last corner of 2023. Glen Owen's going to win. But your new British Superbike champion is Tommy Bridewell by half a point. What an end to the championship. What a brilliant championship. He was, without doubt, a seriously talented and committed Superbike racer. His performances improved with each and every outing. And yet, oft times, Ollie could play the Clown Prince with escapades that really became the stuff. I promised him, I promised him, I will become British champion. A seriously talented and committed Superbike racer. Well, Tommy, it's, there's so many emotions out there listening to that. How do you feel right now? Yeah, um, it, like I say, it, make, it makes your hair stand up on 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 your neck sort of thing um but it is weird because i could sort of we could talk about ollie until sort of i'm blue in the face because you know i i, I love 
I love talking about him is is my brother and and to keep the memory you know alive forever sort of thing. But uh, it it was a tough day, a very tough day in two thousand and seven. Um, a day that you know I wouldn't wish on me worst enemy sort of thing, and uh, a day where obviously I was three, I think, I was three odd years younger than Ollie. Um, it's so hard to 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 sort of digest that in, in as a young lad to kind of think, well, yeah, how do you to kind of get around that? Um, just it, just in general life, but to obviously lose it, lose your brother to a sport that you dedicate everything to is is tough. Um, but uh, I made him a promise, um, and I was able to deliver that promise. Which, like I say, the emotions for me were were so high. To, to be able to do that because it's fine. It's okay promising stuff. Um, but sometimes it is out of your hands, you know, sometimes it doesn't go to plan or, or so on. So for me to be able to make that promise and to, to stand by it, I, I, I would have always gave and will always give 110%. Um, but to be able to cross the line as being crowned British Superbike champion, it was, was very overwhelming for me. But I think the the thing for me that's been more overwhelming is uh, I come over the line, I take the glory, I'm the let's say the face in the voice behind it all. Um, but the support, the messages from from everyone has been unbelievable to the point where it's been almost hard to believe. Like it, it's, it, but I think it's because everyone knows why I do it. Um, and that's why I find the support so overwhelming because they're happy because I've been able to honor my promise, um, honor, you know, Ollie's name. Um, and like I put on my social medias, I don't ever look at it almost as Tommy Bridal, British Superbike champion. Yes, that's what's written on paper, but it's, it's me and Ollie, you know, British Superbike champions. So, um, an amazing, amazing achievement for, for, for me to be able to kind of, get that, um, take the trophy up to his grave uh, in, in just see it up there with him was wow, fantastic. Yeah, and for those of you who haven't seen that, have a look at Tommy's uh, social media channels. It was a really, really poignant picture. It's hard to talk about the future now, but now that you've done that, now that you have won that title for Ollie, what's going to motivate you going forward? Is it a bit like Top Rack Razgatli Oglu in World Superbikes? He won his title in 2021 for his late father, Arif, and he's always said, I want my second title now to be for myself. So is it going to be a little bit like that for you, assuming you're going to stay in BSB? Is the first one for Ollie and the second one for yourself? Um, I think, to be honest, Greg, I think even the even the first ones for for, for all of us, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's everyone that, that around you kind of, let's say, not that has to sacrifice as well, but understands the emotions um, with all of it involved. So there is a big weight lifted off my shoulders. Uh, I actually feel more relaxed in, in more, um, more ex- not excited, but if I am to stay in, in British Superbikes next year, which honestly looks more likely, uh, I wanted to go World Superbikes. That's why I would have liked to have gone. Um, but it just seems that the, 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 the grid, for, for that at the minute is is difficult. Um, so if if I'm in British Superbikes next year, I uh, I'm coming back to just defend my title. Um, to and, and I'm looking forward to being able to do that. Uh, in truth, I'm going to run the number one plate um, on on the bike. So yeah, I think for me it's exactly like you say with Top Rack. He's won his first one for his dad, and he wants to win his second for for himself. But I think honestly, deep down, you always race in in memory or or, or for for a reason. And even if Top Rack or, or I win another one, um, it's still really you still dedicate it to your brother or your father or whoever. Um, and you like I say, you're just the kind of face behind the camera, I suppose. And Tommy, whatever happens in the future now, whether it's World Superbikes in 2024 or beyond, and whatever happens, as you say, it sounds like you're going to stay in British Superbikes for 2024, whether it's with the same team or you go back to where you were before. There's rumours of Honda. There's all sorts of rumours. I guess you're having offers from pretty much everyone in the paddock at the moment. But whatever happens, 
It feels like you're going to be more relaxed than ever. You know you've got the title. Are we still yet to see the best ever Tommy Bridewell? Yeah, exactly that. And it's um, I've chatted to a few ex-World Superbike champions and so on, so they know what they're on about. And some, like I said, going back, the messages I've had from these guys is, is so grateful because it, it, it clarifies that I've done a good job. Um, and it's exactly like they were saying that, you know, the... I'll find it, let's say, not easier, um, but I'll, I'll, you know, be more relaxed and, and ride better again. Because to be honest, you can't, you, no matter what, you ride a bit tense. Um, so for me, yeah, depending on what I do next year, honestly, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of very, very big question marks whether uh, I'll be, you know, where I, where I have, where whether I'll stay with PBM. Um, or Honda, or, or, or you know, uh, other 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 avenues as well. Um, for me, I'm I'm kind of a free agent, shall we say? Um, and wherever I end up going, like I say, I'll be running that number one plate um, on the bike, and, and I want to add to it. So I believe the more relaxed Tommy Bridewell, the faster he is. Um, so for me to be able to kind of feel a bit more relaxed. Is, is is exciting. I weirdly, I don't say weirdly, I feel more motivated in, and excited to get back training already. It's just the fact that I'm, oh, we're only a week down the line. And for me to think, right, I'm going to start training already for 2024, it's too early um, because I just burn myself out. So we're, me and my wife are going to go away to Florida um, next week for a, a bit of a break for a, a week and a half. And then as soon as I get back from that, I'll be, I'll be back. Uh, training and potentially look to to do some tests out in Spain. Um, and, and I do need to think about kind of making a decision of what I'm actually going to be doing uh, in the future. So, um, yeah, I've been a bit too relaxed, shall we say, over this past week. I kind of should probably uh, be thinking of my future, but I've also wanted to kind of almost switch off and just enjoy uh, the moment of becoming British British champion, like say a, a week a week ago today, it's it has sunk in now, which is brilliant. Um, and I'm looking forward to I'm looking at the trophy as we speak, and I'm looking forward to to getting his um, getting his his brother hopefully at the end of the, <laughs> end of next year. <laughs> oh, what a lovely position to be in, though, to be able to choose where you go, because that hasn't always been the case, as you know full well over the years. And have a great time in Florida with your wife, Stacey. One more thing. We all have an expiry date. We never know how long we're going to have, Tommy. But right now, one week on, end of October 2023, a week on from winning the BSB title. How would you like Tommy Bridewell to be remembered when you're not here in the future? Um, exactly the same as my brother. Uh, Ollie will probably... <laughs> Ollie will always be probably more liked because he was such a happy, smiling character. Um, I just want people to to know that everything I've done in in life in racing is is for him. Um, and I also believe that, uh, unfortunately, nowadays the, the social media, the PlayStations, the iPads, and all that for kids is is too accessible. When I was a kid. I didn't have a PlayStation. I didn't have a phone. I didn't have an iPad. I didn't have anything. All I used to do is come in from school, bang, out, out playing football, out on a little motorbike around the garden or whatever it is. Um, just want, you know, that to, to, to always be remembered that that's the, the, the normal, you know, way of life. You know, you don't need to be obsessed with bloody all this sort of modern stuff. And I know perhaps I'm the old fart stuck in the past but um it hasn't served me too bad and uh if you put your mind to it and you will will 100 can succeed because even though i'm i have succeeded what i wanted to um there's been a lot of rocky roads to get to that point of kind of big question marks whether i would have but like i said i never ever lost the faith and never disbelieved that you know if i kept kept working i i would get get there in the end well said and tommy for what it's worth everything you've just mentioned about technology i could not agree more thank you very much we've been chatting there for nearly 35 minutes it's a privilege to talk with you tommy and i'm so pleased to say that you are the 2023 british superbike champion congratulations thank you ever so much for having me greg well there you go then tommy bridewell the 2023 bennett's british superbike champion 